I am Shelby Rodriguez, the marketing coordinator for Lamar University's College of Business. And this is a graduate information session for our management information systems uh, degree, our uh, Master of Science in Management Information Systems. And so um, our guest today is Dr. Piccoli Bendiopatier, or we call her Dr. B. And Dr. B is the uh, professor and department chair for the Management Information Systems Department. And we also have with us Stephanie Broussard. Stephanie is the assistant director for graduate recruitment here at LU. Um, she'll be answering any questions as they relate to the admissions process um, or the university as a whole. We'll all be answering those questions for you if you have them. Um, I'll be monitoring the chat. And so if you have any questions, there's a little chat icon down below. Go ahead and drop your questions there. Um, and either myself, Stephanie, or Dr. B will be able to answer them for you throughout any time during the session. And again, I'm gonna just say that for your privacy, your microphones are muted and your videos are turned off. Um, the video will be closed captioned, so, um, and it's also being recorded. So once this is over, we'll post it at lamar.edu slash visit, and you can go ahead and view the video there. And with, oh, also I wanna make sure I note that um, we do have a lot of students attending with us today. We did invite tons of students. Some are attendees um, who are applicants and some just simply inquired about the program. Some are current undergraduate students. And so we want to make sure that we fulfill everyone's needs with this presentation. And um, for whatever reason, if your question didn't get answered today, feel free to email me, uh, myself, Dr. B or Stephanie, and I'll have our contact information at the end of the presentation. So without further ado, I'll go ahead and pass it over to Dr. B. You still there, Dr. Dr. B? Yes. All right. <laughs> I thought yeah. we lost you there. Okay. All right. Hi, everybody. Um, as um, Shelby said, I'm Dr. B. I chair the Department of Information Systems and Analysis. Uh, the program, uh, Master of Science in Management Information Systems, is housed uh, in the College of Business. Department of Information Systems and Analysis, Lamar University, and I will share some information about the program with you. Feel free to ask me questions um, while I'm presenting. That also is possible, or you can wait and then we can take the questions at the end, okay? So let me go ahead and share my screen with you all. Shelby, can you see the screen? Not yet. No? No, I can't, but um, if you want me to share my screen, I certainly can do that for you. Okay, hold, hold on for a second. I thought I have shared it. <clears throat> Just let me see. Okay, it's failing. Uh, one more try and then you can share, okay? Okay. No? Okay. Can you share the screen for me then? Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Give me one second, guys. All right. Can everyone see my screen? Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. You can see my screen? Okay. And I'm going to make it a little larger for you. Does that work, Dr. B? Yeah. Okay, I need to go to the next one. All righty, Daddy. This one, Dr. B? Um, I can see it. The second one, this one. Who are we? Yeah. Okay, so I have that one on my screen now. Okay, is there a lab? Because I can see it, so. 
Okay, are we in demand? You want that screen? No, I just want to, who are we? Okay, okay. Let me, yeah. There let may me, be a bit of a lag. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, there is a delay. Can you see your uh, PowerPoint on your screen? And I'll follow along with you and just kind of go through the slides. Yeah, I can't go to my screen. That's a problem. Oh, no. You, you shared the screen. That's why. Oh, OK. OK, so I'm going to stop sharing. Excuse me. Yeah, yeah. Now, now it is better. So once I do it, you can share. OK, let me just pull up my okay. PowerPoint and then you can share. Hold on. OK. All right, we got lots of attendees here today. I'm seeing some familiar names. Hi, guys. Thanks for tuning in, all of you. And just yeah. bear with me for one second. Shelby, you can just uh, take care of other you know, items that you had to say till I pull up my file, OK? Sure. So um, well, let me give you guys some interesting facts about the College of Business as a whole and um, just some of those resources that are available to all of our students and our alumni. Um, one really cool thing about the College of Business is that we have the Center for a Career and Professional Development. And so that's housed right here in the Galloway Business Building. So if you're looking for an internship, if you're looking for um, jobs on campus or off campus, we have those resources. You'll talk to a career consultant. They'll sit down. They'll work with you. They'll go through your resume. Um, you can search jobs through Handshake. And there's just a wide variety of opportunities um, that this resource has for you guys. Even if you're an alumnus of the university, um, when you're long gone from here, you'll still have access to those resources. Um, we have an event called JCPenney Suit Up, and so our students and our alumni are able to uh, get a percentage off of professional attire at just JCPenney. So that's a really cool um, perk that comes with it. But I, I absolutely love the Center for Career and Professional Development. I mean, there's networking events on campus. Um, there's career expos each semester and so if you're really trying to hone in on your professional skills that is definitely the resource that um, is going to be the most beneficial for you guys and like I said it's housed right here in the College of Business so you can leave class and come right on down to uh, the Center for Career and Professional Development and we can assist you there and another opportunity that we have is uh, study abroad opportunities. In the past, our students have gone to Spain, China, Argentina, Costa Rica, and um, it's been an amazing opportunity for all of those students. And our faculty and staff also have those opportunities to go on those trips as well. And we have graduate um, scholarships available for you. So if you wanted to study abroad, that's something that you can do and become a global citizen. That's something that looks awesome on your resume. It's going to really hone in on those business skills and really fine tune, uh, you know, your skills as an entrepreneur, no matter what field you're in. So studying abroad is also an amazing opportunity that we have. Um, can I say something for you, Shelby, there? Yes. Um, so hello everyone. My name is Stephanie Broussard. I'm the Assistant Director of Graduate Recruitment at Lamar University. I specialize in on-campus and flexible based programs. Um, so the interesting thing about the MIS program is initially when we, when we, when we launched it, it was a 100% online program. But the great thing about this program is we also have it on campus and flexible learning. Um, so there's a lot of great incentives if you're one of those students that want to come to campus, uh, want to come to campus there's a, several different scholarship opportunities. One specifically is called the Continuing Cardinal Scholarship. It is a scholarship that is especially for students that are um, undergraduate LU students currently. So if you are a student that just graduated, like let's say May 2020, or if you're due to graduate in August 2020, and you're looking to start this program on campus for fall 2020, then this would be a scholarship especially for you. Um, you have to have at least a 3.0 GPA and uh, this scholarship services all programs, but specifically this 
program, but you have to be a student that wants to do an on-campus program. And you have to also want to be a full-time student to participate in the scholarship. Um, so I know a lot of the students, they probably received a bunch of emails from me like up until this point about the scholarship. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's a $2,000 scholarship, and it really does assist students with transitioning from undergraduate to graduate. So that's one less thing you kind of have to worry about. Um, okay. okay, go ahead, Dr. Dan. Yeah, I have the slides now. So can I start? Yes. <laughs> yes, okay. feel free. Okay. Okay, folks. So let's start with who are we? The way we define ourselves is that we are at the top of the food chain. We are information engineers and we are innovators, and we handle the information stream where we receive, store, process, and disseminate information, okay? So before you know anything else, are we in demand? Why would you be interested to know about us if we are not in demand, right? So yes, we are very much in demand. Our students have been recruited by companies such as Total, ExxonMobil, BASF, Invista, Goodyear, Valero, uh, Leandro Chemical, Equistar Chemical, DuPont, Chevron Services, Reliant Energy, Entergy, Cooper Industries, you name it, Facebook, HP, Apple, Lockheed Martin, IBM, Tableau Software, many other companies. Okay? So what do we offer? We offer Master of Science in Management Information Systems on campus and online. We also offer graduate certificates in business analytics and enterprise resource planning. We offer dual degrees in MS in MIS and MBA in ERP, and also MS in MIS and Master of Science in Accounting. So, what is basically a Master of Science in Management Information Systems program? So we are 30 credit hour, basically 10 courses program, and our program is STEM certified. And we are designed to provide students with the necessary technical skills to solve business problems. So notice that we know both technology and business, and that's our strength. We offer, okay, both face-to-face -face and online, I told you that, and our core is in enterprise system. So basically we are positioned to let our students know about enterprise systems. And by that we offer a competitive age for them in the job market. The students graduating from this program will work as either business analysts or ERP consultants business intelligence designer, systems analyst, data analysts, etc. Our curriculum, okay? So we have, as I told you, 10 courses, right? There are five core courses, and these four courses are on enterprise systems. And these courses are uh, ERP overview, then ERP e-commerce, business intelligence, data mining and predictive analytics, and enterprise systems and CRM, which is customer relationship management. So as I was telling you, the core courses are on enterprise systems. So what is an enterprise system? Enterprise systems, example is SAP ERP, can support integration of business processes that cut across different functional areas of an organization. So all these different functional areas of an organization, their processes are integrated in an enterprise system. So the core classes will demonstrate how an ERP system can help a company cut costs and improve efficiencies of the business processes. What is a process? A process is a set of activities that the business performs, okay? So by providing managers with accurate, consistent, real-time data across all business functions. So the key phrase is across all business functions. So enterprise systems is the software that integrate all functional units and their processes, okay? 
So next is what is SAP? SAP is the enterprise system that we use for this program. There are many other enterprise systems packages. For example, Oracle Financials, NetSuite. There are several others, many, many enterprise systems software. We use for this program SAP, which is systems application and products. Why SAP, right? There are so many other packages. Why SAP? There is a reason. So SAP is the world's leading producer of business software. Today, more than 404,100 customers in more than 180 countries run SAP applications. 76% of the world's transaction revenue touches an SAP system. Locally, we did our research, okay? Locally, the petrochem industry is the single largest employer and they rely very heavily on SAP to integrate their business activities. The SAP enabled MIS courses increase the marketability and the starting salary of our MIS students to a great extent. Now, I have talked to you about the core classes. What about the electives? The other five courses, remember we are a 10 course program. So five, four courses, four courses are the same for everybody. And then electives, you can choose any five courses from a list of 10 courses, okay? So I will talk to you now about some of the electives that we offer. We offer a variety of electives. You can pick and choose as you like, okay? So suppose you want to know how to design the structure or the blueprint of a system. You can take Messi 5310, which is information technology project management. If you want to know how to write an app and become a young entrepreneur, you can take Messi 5350, where we teach how to program in Python for business solutions. If you want to be wise and know the future, we will give you a crystal ball. You can take courses such as database management systems, managerial decision making, healthcare information systems, and so on. If you want to be a protector, we will train you and give you the weapon. You can take information assurance and security or and cybersecurity management. These are some of the software that we used in the program. We use SAP, of course, very heavily. We cover all different modules of SAP. We cover materials management, production planning, financial and control, sales and distribution, uh, SAP business information warehouse, SAP CRM, SAP predictive analytics, you name it. We use SAP very thoroughly because that is the chosen enterprise systems in our program. Then we do teach Oracle SQL in our database class. We teach Primavera P6 in our project management class. We teach Python in our only programming class. We teach Tableau in multiple classes. We teach Tableau in healthcare analytics. We teach Tableau in business intelligence. We also teach advanced Excel and Access, Microsoft Access, SAS, visual analytics, SAS BIA. We teach that in multiple classes, business and intelligence class in our healthcare analytics class. And we also teach sales force in our uh, CRM class, customer relationship management class. So it is very software heavy program, okay? It's, it's most of our classes are 70 to 80% hands-on loaded with software. So placement, of course, when you are taking a graduate course, you would like to know how are you going to look for a job? How will you be placed? We faculty, we network with industry. We also have two groups, one in Facebook, another in LinkedIn, where we have more than 500 members from our former students and current students. Many times our former students coach and help our current students to find employment. And as a new student, when you find employment, when you are in a position, you pay it back, okay? So we say we cooperate, we compete through cooperation, okay? And also, also, of course, we have Career Center. In our Career Center, they have a handshake database where they list all the jobs that they have in the field. 
Um, so they put in touch the students with the employers. Okay, so that's a way of getting jobs also. SAP awards and certification. We offer SAP TS Portal certification, which is an integrated business processes in SAP S4 HANA certification. Um, so that also adds to your resume and increase your market value many fold. Other than the Master of Science in Management Information Systems, we have certificates, which are also available online and on campus. For the certificates, you don't need any GMAT. We also offer TS-14 certification for, um, you know, the certificates also. You must obtain a 3.2 GPA for the four courses for enterprise resource planning and the same five courses for business analytics with a C or better in each class. The best thing is that once you complete the certificate and once you want to complete the degree, you can use, reuse all your certificate courses toward your degree, okay? So you took a business analytics certificate five courses and then later you decided that you will you know, like come back for the MBA program or you will do MIS, you can reuse most of the courses. So for the ERP certificate, you need to take any four of the following classes. So we have here listed uh, six classes, okay? And you can take any four. So ERP overview, e-commerce, business intelligence, supply chain management, predictive analytics and the CRM class, any four, uh, and you get a certificate. For business analytics certificate, you have to choose five courses. This is a five class certificate. You can take healthcare information systems, business intelligence, data mining, market research, and data analytics in accounting. So these are your five classes. We also offer dual degrees, okay? so. MS in MIS is 30 credit hour. MBA in ERP is also 30 credit hour. So if you take two degrees, normally it would have taken you 60 credit hours, right? But you can finish it in 48. So there are some duplication. So you can finish both degrees in 48 credit hours. So same thing for MS in MIS and MSA. But in this case, because MSA has stringent requirement, you need to take 52 credit hours for a double degree with MSA and MSA in MIS. Okay? So right now, I will take questions, if you have any questions for me. And guys, I just want to remind you uh, about the chat box down below. Go ahead and drop your questions so that either myself, Dr. B, or Stephanie can answer them. Dr. B, I really like how you... Uh, really accentuated the strong alumni network. You know, that's something that you really typically don't find at other universities. They just kind of, all right, see you later. Thanks. Come back and visit. But you really take the time to nurture your students while they're here and even while they're gone. Yes. Um, so I, I just love that. Now, aside from the strong alumni network, what do you think sets the MSMIS program apart from any other program? I, I think our greatest strength is that we are situated in the College of Business. So we understand business. We are, you know, we know all the strength of the business and then we are using our knowledge of information technology, our knowledge of software to help the companies perform better. You know, why would somebody come to me and not go to you? You know, what can I offer more? so that I can have the customers and not you. So I can give you an edge, you know, over others. And that's what we do. With the help of the technology, the software, we give the students the knowledge to get an edge over others. I love that. And so any student out there, if you're wondering why you should choose this program, that's it. Dr. B just gave you the answer, that's it. Will give you that competitive edge to kind of set you apart from the rest in the business world. You know, you, you just can't beat that. Yeah. Um, so the big picture one, you know, like one sentence that we help companies perform better. You know, that's basically it. The big picture. 
it looks like we have a question, Dr. B. It says, I have two semesters left of undergrad. When would be the best time to start the master's program? You can start in your last semester. That is possible. Or you can start, you know, immediately after you finish. The last semester allows you to take a few uh, graduate courses. Okay, like an early start. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's see, do we have any more questions? Okay, yes. Um, Jose said, if we are applying to the MIS program, can we do a certificate at the same time and apply those same courses toward completion of the MIS degree? Yes, you know, like, basically, if you have the degree, you don't need the certificate, but if you so desire, you can have both. We will be happy to give you both. <laughs> I love that. Um, are there scholarships available for this program, Dr. B? Yes, uh, scholarships are competitive, but it's available. Okay, and I know, Stephanie, you touched on that a little earlier. Let's see. Yes, ma'am, I sure did. I had mentioned earlier about the continuing Cardinal Scholarship uh, for our students that are graduating and going straight into the graduate program. And like I said, those students have to participate in the campus-based program. It wouldn't be the 100% online program. Um, so please be mindful of that. If you have questions about that scholarship, please feel free to email me and I can send you additional information on it. Okay, and Vanessa, I do see your question. Will this presentation be available after the meeting? Yes, it will be available at lamar.edu slash visit. Just give us 24 to 48 hours to um, get it closed captioned and make it available for you, but it will be available as well as all of our uh, previous archive sessions. Stephanie, can you touch on how a student would apply for that scholarship? Oh, sure, sure. So basically, um, I have sent out several uh, emails. I do several different email blasts, uh, and I, t I send these to students that are on the graduation list uh, so that they would have that information. So most likely, if you, uh, if you are a student that has at least a 3.0 GPA and you have at least uh, 90 hours, you should have something in your Lamar email regarding that scholarship. I've been sending emails out since I want to say probably last August and I'm actually due to do another one this week. But um, basically there's a link in, in the email that I send out and it says, you know, request more information. So once you request more information, I give you that information in regards to what, what program you select. I'll send you some information about that program and I'll send you some uh, guideline information for the scholarship just so that you kind of have the best of both worlds. You have information about your program and then you have information about that scholarship. Stephanie, I really love that you reach out to the students and let them know about scholarship opportunities. You know, typically students kind of struggle and they're like, I don't know, I can't find a scholarship. What do I do? Where do I start? But you're going straight to the students. You're hitting them with the information. So I love that. Um, we do have a question. Uh, it says, if I have a hold, if we have a hold on our account, do we need to send an email to register for classes? So I, I can kind of answer that if you want me to. So typically when a student is accepted into a graduate program, every single student, regardless of what your major is or regardless of what program you're, you're going into, every student is going to have a mandatory advisement hold. So that basically means that the student, as a new incoming graduate student, they have to meet with the department or the advisor for that program in order to get enrolled in classes. So I help in kind of transitioning that student into the whole enrollment process. So from the moment that you submit your application to the moment that you're trying to submit your transcripts and you're waiting on a decision and great, you've been accepted now, you have a decision, so what do I do now? I pretty much kind of usher you through that whole process. So if you are a student that was accepted into a program uh, and you were kind of looking up like, what, what do I do now? What you would want to do is you would want to, you would want to reach out to that program. Uh, and I think for this program, it would be Jana. She yeah. assists with um, yeah. She assists with sending out information regarding registration appointments. So Jana Austin is the person that she would want to contact. She's the College of Business, uh, I believe she's program a, coordinator, yeah. the program coordinator. And she will send out that information, that link for you to, to set up your uh, advising appointment so that you can meet with Dr. Bandy or if you're doing the MBA program, Mr. Dyson. All right. And while we're uh, discussing scholarships, Dr. B, maybe you can touch on a little bit about what the program costs. What's the overall cost for this program? 
the program cost is i think it's within 12000 for the online program it's 11850 or so and for the face to face program a little bit more but it's you know in the range of 12000 Okay, we have another question. I know, Dr. B, you mentioned earlier um, the percentage of how hands-on this course is. Mm -hmm. And so Michael wants to know, how are online classes structured? You know, will they get that hands-on experience uh, the same way through the online program? Yes, it's, it's very much um, hands-on. So what we do is we use a course management uh, sh software shell. Our, uh, the software that we use for course management is Blackboard. So in Blackboard, you will find your uh, the lecture the lecture videos, your uh, assignments. The most of the software in our program, actually all of them, are downloadable for free. So we use cloud cloud based software for SAP. You don't have to pay anything extra. SAP, we are a um, you know university alliance program with SAP with our with other software, Tableau. So those software are available to you for free. And your assignments, uh, and many times uh, we demonstrate the software through videos. So yeah, and then also the professor is available to chat with you online or to show you, you know, like hands-on program online. So that's, that's, how, that's how we do. Uh, most of the time we do it asynchronously. But if necessary, during office hours, you can also talk to the professors. Uh, you know, you can have the meeting synchronously also. Yeah. So it's all the courses are very, very hands-on because as we are, you know, like we are using software, so it has to be hands-on. But we also do the concept followed by the practical. So first we discuss the concept and then we use hands-on to perform the application. That's how we manage most of the courses. Thank you, Dr. B. I love how flexible the program is both online um, and on campus. You know, it's available both ways. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're a mom like me, flexibility is one of the top things that I'm looking for when it comes to uh, finding a graduate program. So I love that. Now, Dr. B, does someone have to have a business background in order to do this program or is it open to any particular student or how does it work? It is open to all students. Uh, you do not need to have a business background as such. We have designed the courses, all courses in such a way that we assume that you are coming fresh. And that's how the courses are designed. So no, you don't need to have a business background. You can be from any discipline as long as you have completed your undergraduate education with a 2.5 GPA, you are welcome. There are many in the programs who have no business background and they are doing fine. We started in spring of 2019 and um, this is what? This is summer of 2020, right? So we are like 1.5 years old. We have 120 in the program so far. And um, I would say that more than 50% are not from business. They don't have business background and they are doing as good as anybody else. So when we designed the courses, we had in mind that people are from a variety of different backgrounds. Okay, Stephanie, this may be a question you can answer. How can a student apply for this program? Oh, I'm so glad that you asked. Um, actually, um, I kind of wanted to piggyback off something that Dr. Bandy mentioned. She mentioned that the, uh, I think the, Online program was around 12,000 and the on-campus program was a little bit more. I think it's about 13 to maybe 14. But as as we mentioned earlier, there are a lot more scholarship opportunities available for the on-campus program. So mm -hmm. like I said, mm -hmm. I do the continuing Cardinal scholarship. I know that perhaps the department, the department may have additional funding, but there's also another scholarship called the Graduate Studies Scholarship. And it's awarded through the College of Graduate Studies. So that's, a, that's another one. So, um, just be mindful of that. But in, in terms of how do you apply? So this is a wonderful program. The first thing that you would want to do is you would want to go to applytexas.org. And just like you did when you were an undergrad, you submitted an undergraduate application. So you're going to do the same thing as a graduate student. You would go to applytexas.org and you would create your profile. Um, if, especially if you still have one that's active, you can go in there and you would select what term you're interested in in, in starting this program. So we have uh, 
fall 2020, spring 2021, all the way up to, I believe it's summer 2021 after August 1st, if I'm not mistaken. But definitely if you're looking to apply within fall 2020 or spring 2021, those applications are available right now. We are waiving all application fees currently, uh, whether you do online or on campus due to the COVID-19 situation. So we're waiving all application fees because we definitely, you know, we don't want you to have to choose between you know, applying for graduate school or, you know, getting gas for your car or anything like that. So definitely um, that's going to be waived. I'm not sure exactly when they're going to put those back on, but definitely get your application in so that we can, you know, so that you don't have to pay for that. We are also taking unofficial transcripts in order to um, render a decision to students. But if you are accepted into the program, then you still, you will still be required to submit an official transcript before you can actually enroll in classes. I actually have a video um, on our visit page, uh, lamar.edu forward slash visit. Uh, if you go to archive sessions and if you scroll down to graduate school, I actually have a video where I literally walk you through the whole process of how to apply. Like I share my screen and everything so that you don't have any questions on, you know, what to use select. If you're looking for the 100% online program, then you're going to look management information's online degree, and it's gonna take you straight to the online program. If you're looking for the flexible learning on-campus program, then you're gonna kind of scroll down a little bit further to the bottom and just go for management information systems uh, under the, um, the graduate programs that they drop down. So um, if you have any questions about applying, anything about going through the process, um, please let me know I'm here to help, especially for those students that are uh, campus-based and looking for the flexible learning programs. If you're an on-campus student, if you're a current undergraduate student, definitely I'm here to help. Even if you're an online student, I will definitely help you and point you in the right direction. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you. Um, you know, Stephanie, I'm glad you brought up the COVID-19 situation. Uh, I know with the pandemic, it's been tough all around for businesses, students, and just everyone, the entire community, the world. And so, Dr. B, um, with technology changing and this field changing so much, you know, what would be the, you know, how can students really contribute in this field with the way things are changing now due to the pandemic? You know, one thing is that um, most of us are working remotely, so I don't see why we can contribute to the performance of a business if you, you know, play safe and you can work from home. The rest would be the, you know, the same, the processes a business undergoes on a regular time is the same. You know, like you still have to have materials management, you still have to have production planning and financial and control. So, and also another thing is that we, our program emphasizes a lot, emphasizes a lot on data analytics. So most of the students who graduate from this program are some kind of analyst, either business or data or application. So. 90% of businesses have said that this, uh, the survey shows that 90% of businesses have said that they would need more people to analyze their data to understand what, where they stand. So I think, you know, uh, for us, the job market is always going to be good because people have to realize what to do with this huge amount of data. Even to understand the impact of COVID, you need to analyze the data, you know. So yeah. that is one thing um, that we teach, how to find meaning in billions of records of data. And I believe that that would keep our students busy. Thank you, Dr. B. Can you tell me how much can a student expect to make um, after they graduate with this degree, maybe within six months or so? Uh, from our record, it really depends on, suppose you are in a big city like, you know, in Austin, in Dallas, in Houston, um, the market is really good. Um, comparatively, because Beaumont is not high tech, the salary is a little on the lower side. So, but we encourage our students to be in Houston or Dallas, Austin, so where the jobs are. Uh, on an average, I think after graduation from the program, I would expect from what we have seen that it's generally in the range of 75 to 85, just without any experience. With the experience, of course, it adds to your market value. Market value, I like that. <laughs> and how, what's the fastest that um, a student has completed this program? How fast? Yes, yeah, uh, it is designed for one year if you do it full time. 
if you take so our semesters are eight week long every semester is of eight weeks so if you suppose you start in fall one it finishes in it starts in august finishes in october so the way we have designed this program is that you take two courses per eight weeks so you should be finished by the end of summer so you take fall one fall two spring one spring two and summer two courses each five semester you are done but we have seen if you can take two courses if we have seen that many of our students they work full time they have family small kids so they generally take 1.5 years you know like instead of two there are many who have finished it in two years but if you can't then you can finish it easily in 1.5 years you start with one course you get a feel for it and then you can add up you know so right yeah many many are finishing in 1.5 years i think that's the average time it takes to finish this degree okay now i see we have a question what sort of programs can we expect to do uh i'm i'm assuming software programs okay uh i'm going to share that screen unless dr b you want to go ahead and mention those software programs uh that the program offers yeah, once I, I i i can say you don't have to yeah so our main the emphasis is on sap and then we there are several elective courses that uh, you can choose from and uh, depending on the software you would like to learn but we teach sas via sas visual analytics then we teach uh tableau for data analytics we teach uh, advanced excel pivot table and access database microsoft then we also teach oracle database uh, we teach programming in sql we also teach python programming and also primavera p6 for project management that's a very popular in demand software and for our crm class we use um salesforce okay and a variety of sap modules like we do predictive analytics for um, you know sap module for our predictive analytics class we use a supply chain uh, module for our supply chain class then business information warehouse module for um, crystal reports business objects for our business intelligence class so it's very heavy in software a variety of software we use Thank you, Dr. Biasi. We have one more question. How many courses do you allow for a transfer from another MS MBA program? Okay, maximum of two. If it is related, then we allow from another program maximum of two courses. Thank you, Dr. B. Now, guys, as you can see, this program has so much to offer. There's so much to unpack here, you know, from scholarships, certificates, uh, softwares. There's so many uh, things that we have to offer for you guys. I want to remind you, go ahead and drop your questions in the chat box. And if for whatever reason we don't get to your question today, um, you can always e email us with the contact information that I'm going to provide at the very end of this presentation. And I believe we have one last question. How are the classes structured on self-paced or traditional set time? Tell me again, so, uh, Shelby. So how are the classes structured on self-paced or traditional set time? Okay, the classes, the way they are structured is that it's weekly, right? So for every week, there will be assignments, there will be discussion posts, there are exams, uh, quizzes. So the all eight weeks are available to you. Each of them will have a deadline. You can always submit before deadline, but once you cross deadline, either there's a penalty or many professors will not accept assignments. For exams, there are specific windows which are open and you have to take the exam during that time. That's how they are. It's not self-paced as, as such. It's not that you can complete whenever, there are deadlines for everything, okay? But you can always um, submit ahead of time. Many times, you know, suppose this week is bad for you. You have a lot of office work, you have travel, you have this coming up. You can always complete the work ahead of time. That's possible. But we generally do not accept assignments later. If some professors, they do, they will have a penalty attached with it. 
Thank you, Dr. V. Um, you know, guys, we're going to wrap up our session here. But before we do, Stephanie, did you have any last uh, comments that you wanted to make for everyone? Um, yes, I was mentioning in the chat, um, if you are interested in getting, I have a few little thank you gifts for attending today. I have some postcards and some, some nice little stickers and like they literally just been sitting in my trunk since we haven't been traveling anywhere. So I've been trying to get rid of things. And, uh, so please drop your email address to me in the chat if you're interested in me sending you some stuff. And I will definitely do that. Uh, I'll get it out next week. You can send it to me privately if you like, or you can just shoot me an email after the session. My, my email address is sbroussard, B-R-O-U-S-S-A-R-D, 11 at lamar.edu. That is my, that is my email address. Thank you, Stephanie, and thank you for attending our session today. Guys, I want to thank you for attending. Thank you, Dr. B. You know, this was super informative. And again, guys, I'm going to go ahead and share our contact slide real quick with you right now. Um, you know, with everything going on and COVID-19 and all of that, we're going to be changing the way we do some events in the fall. So we'll have tons of those things coming up for you in August once school starts back. Now, I want to remind you again, like Stephanie said, drop your emails down below in the chat box. Drop your comments below, and this podcast uh, will be on lamar.edu forward slash visit, and um, you can catch it here maybe in two days or so. We'll get it up for you guys. Let me go ahead and share my screen right now. All right. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So here's Dr. B's contact information. You can screenshot this if you want to. And here's my contact information. Stephanie gave her contact information as brucelard11 at lamar.edu. Right, Stephanie? Yes, that's me. Awesome Blossom. And then we have um, a link so you can find your admissions counselor. And again, guys, thank you for stopping in. And we hope you have a great day. Bye. Bye.